Hi everyone, bonjour à tous. Good evening und für unsere deutschsprachigen Freunde herzlich willkommen to Journey to the Chateau. My name is Patrick. And I'm Stuart. And today's episode is about the rescue and renovation of a crumbling, abandoned, mid-century modern home that we bought eight years ago. time there were two people who <laughs> um, had a beautifully renovated home in Chicago in a, a bit transient neighborhood but we had wonderful neighbors um, and an Irish chair. Dog. Yeah, dog. Yes, That's yes, a dog. it's a dog. <laughs> uh, anyway, so one day we realized that putting a 50 foot long leash on, on our girl Ginger and going to the park and throwing a ball and her running back and forth was really not the ideal for yeah. what we think should a do dog's life be. So um, I mentioned that to Stuart and I think two days later he had a list of uh, multiple properties out in the country uh, for us to consider. And a week later, and that was in October, it was pouring rain and uh, leaves were coming down like crazy. We went on a trip to see all these properties. The day that we came out to see this house, we actually had uh, scheduled to see oh, what, three other, three total uh, properties that four. day. Four. Mm -hmm. And this was actually the last of the four that we were seeing. And uh, the first three that we had seen were uh, pretty much no. <laughs> they were, they were, it was, you know, and it was a rainy day. We, you know, uh, a great time to look for a new house is a rainy day because if there are any leaks, you're going to find out about it right away. So, uh, one of the places that we looked at had skylights where when we went inside, there was water just pouring into the great room from the skylights. And there wasn't anything else really about that one that was uh, appealing anyway. So, no. yeah. So, uh, this was the last uh, house that we came to see, and it's uh, mid-century modern. I uh, can't oh. say can't say that I was ever actually you know in the market for specifically a mid-century modern. Do you remember that one house had like uh, three feet, which is about one meter of water in, in the, the basement? basement yes. it, and it yeah. gushed in from the outside. Sorry, just came. I just remember that. Yeah, that was a <laughs> that was actually uh, that was a different one that we saw that. Yes. Day. Yeah, and we, we went inside, like right inside of the entrance were, uh, was a staircase that mm -hmm. actually went down, right, yes. to the basement level. And we could only get like halfway down the stairs before we saw that the whole basement was completely flooded. Indoor water. swimming pool. Yeah. Just not heated. It was terrible, but it was fun. Yeah. So, sorry, mid-century modern. Yeah. So this was the last house that we saw on the day that we were looking. And uh, I sort of loved the property right away when we pulled in. I loved that it had... Uh, uh, from the road, you could not even see the house because it was set so far back. And so there was a, a nice long drive through a wooded area to a big circle drive. And uh, it had a lot of promise. I never thought that I would consider a mid-century home. It's basically one of the only styles that I hadn't lived in before. I know between Patrick and I, he's lived in uh, Florida before in... Uh, are those Fort Lauderdale. Right, in a type of a house. Was it? it was, it was a, a bungalow, bungalow yes. house. And I've lived in multiple houses with, that were Victorians before. And so this was kind of like a very different style that we had ever lived in before. And I actually found it quite intriguing to, uh, to uh, have a style that we hadn't had before. So uh, looked around the property. Uh, oh, wait. Okay. Mind you, we saw three complete and utter disasters. I mean, really... <laughs> bad and we yeah. turned into the driveway um hadn't seen anything couldn't see the house from the road and so it said this is going to be our new home and i just thought after all these disasters yeah. uh i didn't say anything darn he was right <laughs> yeah and that's one of those things that i think that we're looking for when we're shopping for our chateau as well we're wanting that feeling that you know this is the right place and definitely when we pulled into the drive here, I had a feeling that this was the place we were going to live in. 
Yeah, so here we are, um, eight years later, and we're ready to move on. Now let's have a look at this property. This mid-century modern Rambler style ranch house sits on a partially wooded lot of three and a half acres or 1.4 hectares. Built in 1967, it has approximately 4,359 square feet or 405 square meters. The Rambler Ranch style features a horizontal profile with a large footprint across the property, as well as a low pitched roof, wide overhanging eaves, a minimalist exterior with lots of windows and sliding doors to create a seamless indoor-outdoor transition, and the use of mixed materials such as stone and wood all on a single ground floor level. The main house includes four bedrooms, three full bathrooms and one half bathroom, a dining room, a three season room, a kitchen with pantry, a living room, a family room, a laundry room, a bonus room, a utility room, and a four car garage. A later addition of an apartment above the garage has its own separate entrance and includes a living room, a kitchen, a bedroom, and a full bathroom. So just to, to revisit that, when I said the house was abandoned, the previous owners moved out two years prior, over two and a half years prior, in the middle of the night, they never came back, they didn't pay their mortgage. Uh, so no, no one was ever evicted from this house. It's amazing what you can learn from the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> so the, this house was really in bad shape and had so much damage to it and, and a lot of things were hadn't been updated since it was bor uh, born. <laughs> well, since it was built, <laughs> sort of, in 1967. And there were things that were that have been done over the years. There were some bad choices, you know. Once we uh, once we sort of looked up things about uh, mid-century modern homes, we knew uh, sort of how things should be. And uh, you know, one of the things on this, you know, I'm not a big fan of putting shutters on a house that they're basically screwed in place and they serve no purpose. And, yeah. uh, oh, they are plastic. And they're plastic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was important to mention. Beautiful, yes. I, no, they were completely, they're just a waste of resources. Yeah, they did not belong in this house. And obviously no. they were not part of the original house at all. No, no. and we had uh, windows that were the, where cold air was blowing in like, yeah. Uh, a fan. Yeah, so this this is a 1967 built and it had a lot of original features in it that have never been updated, which included the windows. Yes, single pane. Right. And there are beautiful mid-century features. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that did not stand the test of time. And a lot of the things we found here were just not good. One of the things I wanted to point out in this photo is this is a photo of the back of the utility room on uh, what direction side of the house is this? I don't even remember. It's, this is the it's south. south side of the house. That's correct. Yes. Thank you. And uh, uh, what you're seeing here is a lot of overgrowth and at the bottom of the photo uh, there's a lot of debris and what we found out when we started clearing this out was, wow, how many, what the kind of things were in there? There were like... Uh, uh, pieces of an old sawhorse. There were, I mean, this was basically plastic a plastic weights. Yes, a junk pile. And what we found out after we cleared everything out of here is that this is where the wellhead was at. So this is where our water comes from. Right. So all of this stuff was sitting on top of the well where, all, where our drinking water comes from. It's like, where do you get your water from? Garbage pile. It was lovely. So needless to say, we cleared this out uh, very, fairly quickly. <laughs> so we had access to the wellhead. Yep.
So the former owner was not a big fan of actually doing anything for the house or the property. <laughs> no. Um, when we bought the house, I started mowing and I think it took me 10 minutes. And the, it was amazing and Stuart mentioned that it was incredible how fast nature takes over. Which right. It's a good thing. Yeah. But the problem here was that the plants that took over were invasive species mm -hmm. and they're not native. There's European buckthorn, which is a horribly invasive species that right. is in our area. Uh, they try to eradicate it. And we have Chinese bittersweet, which is a strangler vine. Right. Yes. So there is, there is a, a, a native bittersweet, which grows about seven meters tall. And that's it, uh, which is 20, about 20 feet. The Chinese bittersweet is also highly invasive. There are no natural enemies and it grows up to 80 feet tall and covers entirely entire trees. There were there are trees that we lost here or had were already lost, but um, they cover an entire 150 year old oak and with the leaves, uh, the branches being heavy when, there, when there's snow and ice rain, it basically tore the entire tree apart. So. We did all this work and to, to push, uh, basically get rid of all these invasive species. And so that's that before and after, which is kind of shocking. And I have to admit, before I looked at these pictures, a lot of things I had already forgotten. Forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Originally, the kitchen had a swinging door to the dining room, mm -hmm. a slider into the great room slash living room, yeah. and uh, a fairly wide entrance from the hallway right next to the, or across from the front door, which someone at some point thought, oh, let's not do this. So let's at least uh, uh, just put in a very, very narrow door with a folding door in it. Um, and then there was a second very small door, same size, and that in order to get into the kitchen, one has to basically go wiggle oneself through the pantry, and that was not a correct idea either. I, it was bad. Right. Yes. And you know, there was there was nowhere else in this house where there was this kind of paneling, and I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's wood paneling. That's got to be great. But you know, really. It didn't belong here. It was really not that great of paneling. And it, it just didn't make sense that you come into the front entrance and there's this strange wooden door that you step into a pantry. Well, and and it's, then, this is basically, it's, it's, uh, it's, par it's basically parquet, very thin, flimsy parquet right. flooring. Yes, it was. This was not wall paneling. This no, it was, was, no it, was a, it was a flooring that was used as paneling. The entire house was wired with uh, an intercom and radio system. Totally state of the art in 1967. Oh yeah. However, none of them were still working. No. We tried to get them, get an estimate to get them repaired. Uh, that was a fortune. And as much as we like to be detailed and true to the time, um, we decided against them. Right. Yeah, I would have liked to have kept it uh, if it was a, if it was something that would have worked. It, it was also, which was really cool, an intercom. So yeah. you could, there were buttons for every room yeah. where you could basically... And, uh, and also for uh, outside in the back patio to the pool. So you could actually be out there and you could be in the house somewhere and you could actually use the intercom to talk to somebody who was out on the back patio. It, very, very cool. And you had yeah. music outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the 60s, there was... Uh, really cool when we really wanted to keep this yeah. there was no way everything was rot um so that was that yeah the connection between the kitchen and the dining room was through a swinging door which was nice and there were two 
very nice large size closets and in between the, the two closets or uh, cupboards was an alcove. Right. So you open up those um, cupboards and there was a gas water heater uh, about two feet, 50 some centimeters away from an electric panel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that was up to code, but... It wasn't. That was completely yeah, illegal no, no, and we had to, to remedy all of that. Yeah. Across from the dining room, which at some point someone opened up and very, you know, it, it's, uh, they did a good job, was a really large closet. And this house has a lot of storage. It does. And we already have a coat closet, so we did not need this closet. And that's when Stuart said, oh, let's take that out. And uh, I want a wine storage. And I thought, oh, good Lord. But anyways, we did it. And uh, it turned out really, really nicely. And you've, people who are following us have seen us sitting in front of that wine storage mm -hmm. many a times. And it's delightful because you can look at it now from, uh, we have dinner, you can look at it from the dining room and it has LED lighting, which changes colors uh, or the brighter lights. So it's, it's really such a nice feature. The next room we would really like to show you is our original kitchen. Sounds really good, right? Um, and we have seen kitchen in, in some of the chateau in France. They were really remarkable. This kitchen was not so remarkable. No. This was uh, the original 1967 kitchen. I believe even with the original 1967 appliances in it. Uh, yes, yeah, some of them. There, so there was yeah. a stove that was so rot that uh, it was an electric stove where um, everything was falling through because it was <laughs> the, right. the entire base of, of every uh, burner was completely gone. Yeah. There was a double oven, which was great, very, very uh, innovative at, at the High time. High-end for at the time, yeah. Um, and both of them had about an inch of burned on goo. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, it was, it's a huge kitchen. It was very, very large. Um, and had these these boxes above all the cabinets, so we call we call it soffits. Soffits. Mm -hmm. uh, not so smart, not so pretty, and it has a fireplace. We knew we wanted to redo this, and we knew we had to do that before we moved in, mm -hmm. and um, it was a big big feature feature for us. It was. It was basically one of the first things that we did. Now we haven't mentioned yet that. Uh, you saw from the diagram earlier that there is an apartment, separate apartment that's above the garage. So what we did was when we first moved here, we actually lived in that apartment while we uh, redid, basically this area was the first thing that we did. We, it was the, the dining room, kitchen, great room, family room was basically the area that we actually started uh, uh, renovating first. Absolutely. Now you have a house that is designed for entertainment. Uh, don't forget, it's pre-COVID, uh, long pre-COVID. And from the kitchen, there is no way to get into the backyard. So there used to be a slider, which is now just a picture window. Uh, and it was um, one of the few, I think it was the only double pane window we had. Right. Uh, however, the seal was broken, so it was kind of milky. It, it fogged up kind of thing. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, so we knew that uh, one of the things that we were going to do was restore that back to how it should be. Yep. And so we were going to put a slider back into where that, uh, that window had been. Now we're sitting in the great room, also living room, mm -hmm. and it's about almost two stories tall. Um, we're sitting right in front of the fireplace. You see there, the floors were torn up because uh, they were so damaged, so they needed to be repaired. And um, it was a bit shocking to see, <laughs> to see the room. Yeah. We ordered a very large dumpster and it was dropped off in front of the house and we started to demo the kitchen. So we took all the cabinets out, they were reused in the garage. Yeah. Um, and then we started to open up the walls and Above the cabinets were the soffits, and I remember one area was opened up and debris fell out. Well, we thought it was debris. It was actually about, I don't know, 10, 12 
centimeter, about a foot tall of mouse droppings. And so it was, uh, crew debris was, <laughs> was awful. Right. So, I mean, the, the idea that we had was, is that we wanted it to be uh, more of an open concept. So uh, we decided that we were going to, I don't know if we mentioned this before, but we decided that we were going to open up between the kitchen and the dining room to make it so it was a big open space. So we were taking out the, uh, and, and relocating the uh, ill-placed water heater and electrical panel and uh, moving them to an appropriate place. And then we were going to make it uh, a, a more of an open concept between the kitchen and the dining room. Which made it even more of a party house. Right. So the, the, um, in the 80s, it was apparently in, it, at least out here, to put um, extra soffits in to make uh, hallways appear lower and the openings were smaller and very claustrophobic and so we had to undo all of that and restore it. Right, yes, and uh, this picture is showing that what we were wanting to do in, from the view from the great room was we were wanting to balance out the left and the right side so they were the same. So the, the right side, which goes to the front entry, and the left side, which goes into the kitchen, we wanted to have to be exactly the same. So we had to, re we removed, <laughs> on the right side, we removed a soffit that was there that shouldn't have been there in the first place. And on the left side, we removed a, a pocket door that had been added at some point and should, and should never have been there either. Pocket door and, and a fake wall. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was a hollow uh, wall, so we, there was a lot, lot that needed to go. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to mention here uh, in these photos is we were at a point in the kitchen dining room area where uh, we were having the, we needed the floors to be filled back in in any of the empty spaces that we had. Yes. Right. And so we had decided to use the same person that we did when we did the flooring in Chicago. Yeah. And so John is from Poland and he did his whole apprenticeship journeyman um, in Poland, uh, came to the United States and he is a wizard with flooring. Yeah. He's amazing. And it, we knew that he would do a much better job than we could ever do. So this is nothing we wanted to do ourselves. And so that's why we had John and it was, again, a great experience. Yeah. So once the floors were done, um, we could start to put in our kitchen. And uh, we did the, the entire installation of the kitchen and um, we did ourselves. And the only thing we didn't do was um, the countertops. Right. Yeah. And we did research on that because we wanted to know uh, for this style of a mid-century home, what was recommended that people use for uh, a countertop surface. Right. It was basically a choice, either concrete right. or quartz, right. period. It's a little funny story. Um, or not so funny, actually. Mm -hmm. So we had, a, it was a requirement for us to purchase the house. It needed to be something that needs to be inspected, which was a water heater. And we were not here. And the person came, and a plumber, so high hopes. and. So he went into a great room and he couldn't find the entrance in the great room to the utility room. So he went into the bathroom, there was no entrance. And then he went to the family room and he didn't find an entrance. So what does a reasonably smart person do? There are usually four sides to a room. Uh, most of us, I suppose, would have gone outside and looked for an entrance, which right. there is or was to that utility room. Uh, this plumber thought, oh, why bother? And he just hacked 
the wall to pieces and went through the wall into the utility room. Yeah. Um, no words. <laughs> One other feature of this house that I really liked was in the on the back side of the house was a screened-in porch that was a very unique architectural detail on the house. Now in the winter, because it had it had uh, metal screens, which uh, it's very durable, um, and as our dogs get get a chance to run through it, um, the screen that is. Um, but it was was interesting because in the winters here we sometimes have snowstorms with very high winds and then you look the next morning and there is a whole yeah, were, not just a little little no there were carpet large of... snow drifts <laughs> in the screen porch yeah and you know the nice thing is it's it's on a concrete slab and it has beautiful tiles on it um and we realized very early on that that was not what we wanted right and so we put in uh, um, we, we rehabbed the entire thing, so it was everything was uh, repainted and repaired, mm -hmm. and we had recommendations from uh, we had uh, uh, neighbors who lived down the road here who actually had redone uh, their room. Yes, in the in Hi, these, Jackie, <laughs> Jackie and George, <laughs> who had redone their windows and in, uh, in a, a similar. Was it the same brand? It was the same brand. Exactly the same brand. Of windows. And so uh, from their recommendation, we went and looked it up. And so uh, it was, uh, we decided to enclose it and make it into a three season room. Which is really, really lovely. Right. It's great. So this was a very um, long renovation. It took us years to renovate everything. So this is the first part of, of this um, crazy adventure. And I can, I can say that it didn't matter if it was the house in Chicago or this house or the next step that we're planning. There are a few people, well, most people who say, are you crazy? <laughs> and I suppose we've been told that we're yeah. asked that if we are crazy, that okay. I suppose we are, yeah. but it was this was a very uh, it was very satisfying. It was very um, it, it was just this large renovation. Um, I mean, this house is over five hundred square meters or over six thousand square feet large. Totally, yeah. And so it there there are so many things that um, we could bore you to death with our stories. So we're not going to do this. And um, so this is years of renovation. Uh, put together in basically two episodes. Right. We hope you enjoyed this. So we'll see you next time at Journey to the Chateau. Uh, au revoir. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please use the like feature to let us know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our Journey to the Chateau YouTube channel if you would like to see more. Once you've subscribed, you can tap the notification bell in order to ring it, which will allow you to receive all notifications from our channel. Thank you.